Hello guys, it's Johnny time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Either if you are a Solidity developer or a smart contract auditor, this tool is a must in your toolbox. In case you are a Solidity developer, it will allow you to examine your code base in a high level in a much more efficient way. And if you are a Solidity or smart contract auditor, it will allow you easily to jump into new code bases and get a high level overview and understand how they look like in a first glance. And I'm talking about the Solidity Metrics VS Code plugin. In today's video, we'll learn what is this VS Code plugin, why it's so awesome, how it can help us and how we can use it, what kind of value we can derive from this tool as smart contract auditors and developers, and of course, some tips of tricks that I am using when it comes to using this awesome VS Code extension and plugin. I'm super excited, so without further ado, let's get started. So this Solidity Metrics VS Code plugin gonna give you so much value as an auditor because if you come to a new code base, you're gonna run this tool on the code base and then it's gonna generate for you a huge overview about the project, about the smart contracts and the most basic data that it's gonna give you that is super important is how many lines of codes the project has. So it's gonna count how many Solidity lines of codes every contract has and then aggregate it and summarize it together. So if you are a private smart contract auditor and you need to give a quote, a price to the client, you can use this tool in order to count the Solidity lines of code and understand how big the code base is and give a relevant offer to the client that you're gonna audit his contract. Apart from an offer, it will help you by examining the size of the god base to basically plan and give a timeline to the client and tell him, hey, listen, you have 4,000 line of codes here. It's going to take me one, two, three weeks, whatever, you name it. But it's going to give you a big overview about a new code base and a new project that you are going to audit. Now, apart from counting line of codes and give you an overview about a project, you got to understand better what kind of smart contracts they include, what kind of functions they have and specialities the project has. So when you deep dive in details to every single smart contract, you have a very good foundation ground when you understand the macro and how the contracts interact with each other. So let's see this tool in action. So first you need the VS Code because it's a VS Code plugin. And once you're in VS Code, you're gonna search for Solidity metrics in the plugin store and solidity metrics this is the plugin as you can see over here it's a plugin by consensus diligence and this is how the plugin looks like you also even have a gif here that shows you how to use the plugin we'll see it in action in a moment and you can take a look at the description you're just gonna click here install and make sure it's enabled now, once you install the plugin, it's active. Now you can go to the project where you have your smart contracts inside. As you can see, we are in the beloved USSD smart contracts project. If you don't know what is the USSD smart contracts, check out my other video. It was an awesome contest in Sherlock and I share what kind of vulnerabilities I found in the smart contracts in the complete USSD contest video. So if you want to learn more about smart contract vulnerabilities, and auditing contests, definitely check out the other USSD contest video. So this is the smart contract of the USSD uh, contest. And let's say I'm a new auditor and I wanna participate in the auditing contest in Sherlock and wanna get a high life, highlight and a, a first idea about the contracts of this project. So I'm gonna right click here on the contracts folder and here Solidity Metrics. Now the plugin is going to generate for us the report and the metrics about the smart contract. We have a nice table of content over here. Scrolling down a bit, we see some high level information about the project like the name and all the included files, all the files that are included are the Solidity files within the contracts folder. These are excluded path 
file limit, some unrelevant information, and here this is the most relevant information. Here we basically see every smart contract that is included in the folder, and we can see a lot of data regarding every smart contract. We can see the interfaces that it inherits, it uses, the lines of code, and lines, and SLOC, common clients and complex score. Let's go through every single one of them so you understand exactly what it means. Lines means how many lines in total this file have. So if we go to IUSSD uh, balancer over here, we can see that it has in total 34 lines of codes. Now, NSLOC refers only to solidity line of codes. Usually this is the uh, metric that usually matters when it comes to examining the size of the code base, how many solidity lines of codes, actual solidity commands are included in the file. And you can see that out of 34, we have only 15 solidity line of codes because 13 of them are just comment lines. All these kind of comment lines are not counted. Only SLOC, only solidity lines of codes are counted here. These are the comment lines and how complex is this smart contract, some kind of complexity score that consensus diligence uh, gave to this contract. And you can see the same details for every smart contract. And here on the bottom, you can see the summary. So we can see that in total, we have eight smart contracts, four interface, 1,075 lines of code, and in total, only 539 solidity line of code. Now, if you're gonna enlarge and toggle this kind of legend, here you have a small dictionary that explains what every metrics basically says over here. Now, if you scroll a bit more down, you can see some kind of pie chart that shows you like the ratio between actual source files, solidity code to comments to single line, you know, just kind of pie chart that shows you all the different uh, lines of code that the project includes, some kind of inline documentation, how much documentation actually the project has, so you can get a first idea of how hard it's gonna be for you, the audit, because if there is not much documentation, then it's gonna be a bit more tough for you as an auditor. If you are a developer, you can run this tool and see if your project needs more documentation or count the line of codes. You can see that in total we have eight contract and, and, and four interface. We don't have any abstract or contracts or libraries. We have 68 public. We don't have any payable functions in the smart contract, which means that we don't deal with native ETH. It doesn't receive any ETH. Uh, but we have 37 external function, 56 internal, zero private, one pure, and 33 views. So as you can see, we already have some kind of idea about the repository, about the code base, how many external, internal, line of codes, payable functions, state variables. We can see that we have a total of 21 state variables. 10 of them are public. We can see also extra details about the project. For example, what kind of Solidity compiler version it uses. So here you can easily have a low level findings because you can only see that this project using, is using multiple types of Solidity compiler compilers across different smart contracts, and this is a low severity finding that you can easily report in Coderina or Sherlock. It uses both 0.8.6 and 0.76 and 0.90, whatever, different line of versions. You can see that there is one assembly block in Solidity. You can use assembly using a language called Yule, and you can see that they use it one time. It uses hash functions. It doesn't have low level calls, delegate calls, can receive funds, can restore. And yeah, yada, yada, yada. You can see a lot of things and high level about the project, what kind of features it has. And it's very good high level. If you scroll down a bit more, you can see all the dependencies, all the external contracts that this project interacts with. So you can already see that it interacts with Chainlink smart contracts. So you can understand that this repository, this project is utilizing Oracle services from Chainlink. Maybe it's a lending protocol. It's need to determine asset prices or something. You can see that it uses ERC20, access control upgradable. So you can learn just a lot. Uniswap, Oracle library, pool address. So just from looking at the dependencies, you can understand that it interacts with ERC20 token, that it's upgradable smart contracts with uh, upgradability uh, using proxies. 
You can learn that it uses Uniswap probably to swap tokens or the TWAP Oracle service for Uniswap to get an asset price, TWAP price. So just by looking in this high level view, you have already so much knowledge about this repository that you are going to audit. By the way, guys, when it comes to smart contract security, hacking and auditing, this tool is just the tip of the iceberg. It's not enough. You need to learn and practice real life smart contract vulnerabilities, learn how they look like, how to exploit them and how to prevent them in your smart contracts. And if you want to get the best training available, a practical, complete smart contract hacking course with a lot of exercises and awesome gold valuable contract check out the link in the description below and enroll to the smart contract hacking course and join our amazing blockchain security academy i can't wait for you to get started now the last two underrated features that this uh, plugin has is the inheritance graph this is very very useful by the way and i usually include this inheritance graph in my audit reports and i use it to get an idea about which contracts are dependent and inherited from which contracts because you can see for example that here you have the ussd contract that inherited from the interface from erc20 upgradable so it's an erc20 token from access control so it has some access control mechanism and just by looking in the inheritance graph over here you can get an idea of some vulnerabilities like access control vulnerabilities that it might have interaction with erc20 tokens then uh, vulnerabilities these vulnerabilities that we cover in the course and if you want to learn more definitely check out the link in the description and sign up to the course and practice actually practice with exercise all these kind of awesome vulnerabilities and this this has actually helped me a lot when it comes for auditing this repository and I was able to find five high severity vulnerabilities in this auditing contest of USSD and it just gave me an awesome idea about the project and the contracts because you can already see that you have here some Oracle contracts that are all inheriting from iStable Oracle and yeah, this is an awesome feature that I use many, many, many times. Another awesome feature is the call graph. It's some kind of graph. And this is going to show you all the calls that this smart contract makes, either if it's internal contracts or external contracts, you know, all the dependencies that it uses or just calls between contracts in the same project. And this diagram and graph is going to give you some idea about every contract and how it interacts with other contracts in the repository or external contracts in the blockchain. So this is another awesome feature. So either if you're a smart contract auditor and you want to give a quote to a client or get idea about a new code base, you should definitely check out this uh, plugin and download it to your VS Code uh, IDE. If you're a smart contract developer and you want to get more idea about your project while creating it or before handing it over to a smart contract auditing film also this tool is for you now if you enjoy this video and like this content first make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome educational videos about smart contract security i will see you in the next time bye bye